Hi, it's Dwyer. DwyerCrime.blog. Also, always, 1776.com. Today is Monday, November 22nd, 2021. Let's talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse acquittal. Right, since the acquittal took place, several friends have reached out to me. They're outraged. They can't believe it. They don't know how this guy is still walking the streets. Right now, folks, I also believe there are people like me out there. I'm very concerned with civil rights. Right, I've spoken to Kwame Ture uh, before he died. I voted for Jesse Jackson in a presidential primary, right? Hell, I voted for Walter Mondale. I'm a person of a certain age. Well, let me just point out that I'm astonished that this case was even brought by the prosecution. I just don't understand where there was ever any meat on the bone for a conviction that would stand. Right? In the comment section of this video, please leave your thoughts. Be specific. Tell us exactly what you believe Rittenhouse did that would expose him to criminal liability. Right? Let's talk about it. Now, first, let's agree that the state of Wisconsin allows open carry. In other words, I can walk peacefully down the street with an AR-15 style rifle, right? Doing so doesn't mean that I should be convicted of having a rifle out in public because the state legislature, the laws of that state allow me to do so, right? There's no criminal culpability for me walking down the street with an AR-15 style rifle. Let's go one step further. High profile case. You would envision that the prosecution would only bring real charges, but that's not what happened here. One of the charges was dismissed by the judge. Understand the judge had no choice. It was possession of a loaded firearm by a minor. The reason the judge had no choice was because the statute itself did not apply to guns the length of Rittenhouse's gun. Right? This was some phantom charge thrown out by the state. I'm guessing they threw it in the indictment to apply pressure to Rittenhouse to confess. Right? Well, just understand it backfired. Rittenhouse actually got competent counsel. Counsel pointed out to the judge, look, this statute doesn't even apply to these facts. So, of course, that statute got dismissed as it had to get dismissed. So let's get back to the other charges. Now, What I want people to do here is to think about Wisconsin self-defense law, right? If you feel I'm misrepresenting it, keep me honest by leaving a comment in the comment section of this YouTube video. In the state of Wisconsin, someone can use deadly force in self-defense if they reasonably believe they are in imminent danger of death or great bodily harm, right? This is a reasonable person standard. Let's also consider the fact that things happen quickly. The person who is being threatened doesn't have complete information, right? The information is incomplete. The person has to make split-second decisions. Now, as I see it, 
if you're carrying an AR-15 style rifle and someone without your consent tries to take that rifle away from you, right, someone other than law enforcement, then I believe you are at risk of imminent danger of death or great bodily harm. Right? The person, a stranger, is trying to take the gun from you to do what? One distinct possibility is to use it on you. Right? Well, let's talk about the three people Rittenhouse shot. If you believe there's criminal liability arising out of any of these shootings, tell us why. In the comment section of this video, let me point out that I've heard some legal pundits claim that Rittenhouse should have been convicted. Let's talk about each of the people who were shot. The first person is a, a gentleman named Rosenbaum. Right now, Rosenbaum chases Rittenhouse. It's not the reverse. Here, Rosenbaum chases the guy with the gun, right? At trial, it's not just Rittenhouse's testimony. There is another witness who confirms that Rosenbaum reaches for Rittenhouse's gun. So Rittenhouse is chased by this individual who reaches for his gun. I would argue that Rittenhouse's use of deadly force was justified. Let's talk about the second person Rittenhouse shot, Uber. Understand that Uber strikes Rittenhouse. Right, strikes him with a skateboard. Rittenhouse isn't just threatened, folks, he's hit. I would argue that Rittenhouse's split-second decision was justified in using deadly force. Right Up until now, we haven't had a scenario where Rittenhouse is on the offensive. Right, Both of these sound defensive to me. Let's talk about the third person who actually took the stand at trial. The third person survived. A gentleman named Gross Roots, and I apologize for butchering names. Now understand, Gross Roots admits that he was armed with a Glock pistol, and that he raised his hand at Rittenhouse before being shot. Right, folks, can we agree that a person pointing a gun at you, pointing a gun at you, offensively is creating an imminent danger of death or great bodily harm. So Rittenhouse shoots three people. When this case was initially brought, when they announced that they were going to try this guy, I thought, okay, surely they must have other information. Right? Rittenhouse must have done something that's not reflected on film. Or he must have told someone that he was going hunting. There must be some offensive part of what he was doing. Right, folks? For those of you who watched the trial, tell me what that was. Right? The two people who lost their lives here either chased Rittenhouse and reached for his gun or hit Rittenhouse with an object they had. Based on those facts, I'm perplexed as to why folks don't feel that he had a self-defense argument, a valid one. Right, so, 
in the comment section here, tell us why you feel he should be convicted. Keeping in mind that we're not here to make laws. Rather, we're here to apply laws. Right? If Wisconsin has an open carry law, then someone can open carry without being charged with criminal liability. Right? Name me the person who Rittenhouse pointed the gun at and threatened before being attacked. Let's also separate out what's relevant from what's irrelevant, right? Understand the law in the state of Wisconsin deals with the reasonable belief of the person who ultimately uses deadly force, right? Now, if some protesters wrongly believe that Rittenhouse is an active shooter, right? If they have some misbelief that Rittenhouse is something other than who he is, right? They believe Rittenhouse is an active shooter when Rittenhouse hasn't offensively taken shots at anybody until someone reached for his gun. Well, I would argue that that's irrelevant, folks, because the statute talks about the state of mind of the person who uses self-defense, right? Pointing out, pointing out that someone who was shot wrongly believed that Rittenhouse was an active shooter does not incriminate Rittenhouse in any way, shape, or form, right? The only shots Rittenhouse fires are when someone reaches for his gun or when he's hit or someone raises a gun at him. If that's the evidence, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if that is the evidence, then Rittenhouse should have been acquitted, right? So let's have a dialogue. Make whatever point you want in the comment section of this video. I want to encourage people watching this video to understand that the real dialogue is in the comment section of this video, right? As I see it, and this is unfortunate, Right? People getting killed, it's unfortunate. But I believe Rittenhouse is following the law. Right? The law allows for open carry. The statute concerning minors with loaded firearms doesn't apply to this situation because of the size of the gun. That's the legal status quo in Wisconsin. If third parties thought Rittenhouse was an active shooter, then what they should have done is called police. Right? When you confront someone who doesn't have the AR-15 style rifle pointed at you, and you try to forcibly take that weapon from them, the weapon that they have a legal right to have, you're placing yourself at risk. Folks, that's the law that the court was to apply here. I believe the court did so correctly. I believe the jury, more specifically, made the right findings here. Right? Let's face it, too. This case was overcharged, right? I don't want the judicial system coming up with politically inspired prosecutions 